Many of you guys might be surprised to hear that I have a deep love and appreciation for the world of Islam, especially being a Jewish traveler. But the truth is that Islam is a beautiful religion. So in today's video, I want to share with you three beautiful stories about Islam around the world. We begin with my buddy Sal, who I met a few months ago in Dakar, Senegal. This is Sal. And on my journey to every country in the world, I reverted to Islam. Sal grew up Catholic in the great state of Indiana and spent 11 years going to Catholic schools. And we would go to church almost every Sunday. Like, I took it pretty seriously. I would, uh, like, read the, the catechism and read the Bible. And In college, he did an 18-month world tour across East Africa, Israel, Palestine, the Middle East, India, Nepal, and Venezuela, and that's what opened up his mind to the world. He became more and more curious about his spirituality and was searching for himself until one specific day in February of 2013 when it all came together. I was in my village where I have a farm in Tanzania and I was speaking with a village elder and he asked me what do you believe and when I told him what I believed he said that's Islam and I asked him to tell me more and for the first time it sounded like the truth not just a version so I had learned about so many different religions and heard so many different truths and they were all fascinating but when I learned more about Islam, it felt like the way, it felt like uh, the truth and the way to get closest to God, which is the ultimate journey. Then the newly converted Sal set off to travel the world, visiting every single country along the way and becoming the youngest at the time to complete this feat at 27 years old. Welcome to Belgrade. I have arrived in the Galapagos. Equatorial Guinea is one of the world's least known and most confused countries. I am here in Kyrgyzstan. I am loving so much being in these mountains in Georgia. All the while, he developed a closer connection with Islam and God. One of my favorite things about traveling to every country was seeing all the different forms of Islam and praying in mosques in all different Muslim-majority countries and also in mosques in countries where the Muslim population is a huge minority. I think it showed me how diverse the religion is. Really, Islam is the most flexible religion. It's incredibly dynamic. It's practiced in so many different ways. In Sal's eyes, spirituality goes beyond nationality, gender, and race, and he will continue to learn and grow as he travels more and more. To better understand humanity is to more clearly see God. For this man, Islam has become the most important thing in his life. He currently resides in Abu Dhabi, can understand Arabic, fluent Swahili. Jina la kijijichangu ni mangula, na kweli ni minaweza kuongea kiswahili. Prays five times a day and is just a happy, happy guy. I'm really glad we finally got to meet in Dakar after five years of being Instagram friends. And it's cool to see you in person, man. It's really fun. I promised them I would see them before they finished every country, and here we are. Lastly, it's important to know that this story is not about Sal being a Muslim traveler, but rather, it's about how Islam became a part of his journey. He's not selling or pushing Islam, because he respects everyone's own opinions and beliefs. But for this 29-year-old man, he has clearly found his way. So Sal, what is one message you want to say to the world? that just like everybody should travel in the way that is personal for them, everybody's journey to the divine will be unique and should be for only themselves. For the next Islamic story, we head over to the Maldives where I spent my birthday exactly two years ago. It just happened that we visited during Ramadan, which is actually happening now as I speak this, and we had a special experience on a local island. This morning, we took a speedboat to one of the 200 locally inhabited islands called Mafushi. It's like the Bali in Maldives. Where we checked in to this cheap hotel for $30 a night. Not 3,000, not 300, 30. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the unseen side of Maldivian culture and show you how easy it is to travel here on a budget. I got in touch with some locals, Ishan hey. and Soti, hey. who are kind enough to show me local life on the island. Drew. Drew. Yeah, yeah, smile. It's the start of rainy season, and it's been windy and pouring since we arrived, but that's part of the experience. So we're trying to explore, but it's pouring rain outside. I was told I cannot come to the Maldives until I try their coconuts. 
So I headed to this local shop and got one for two bucks. Rest assured, it's pretty good. 30 rupiah, $2 yeah. for this coconut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. The Maldives is a predominantly Muslim country and there are four mosques on this island. I'm here during Ramadan, the holiest month in the Muslim religion, which means they don't eat from sunrise to sunset for a month. We headed to the biggest mosque to see iftar or breaking the fast. It was really a special experience to witness this and they all welcomed me with free food and open arms. It's an Islamic tradition to break the fast with dates and they are really tasty. It's officially 6.13. The sound of prayers illuminate the island and it's time to eat and drink. Good. Afterwards, I was welcomed into a local house to eat a home-cooked iftar dinner. There's a lot of food here. We're gonna break the fast for Ramadan. They were cooking kebabu, bokiba, which is like fish, coconut, and rice balls, spicy pasta, chicken sandwiches, and vegetables. It looks spicy. Yeah, we like spicy food. Models love chilies. So much good local food, and it all cost $5 at the local market. And this is what a typical plate looks like to break the fast. Mmm, these fish cakes, man. I'm bringing them back to America. Today was an amazing day and I spent just $40 on everything including a hotel and dinner. The moral of the story is that you don't have to be surrounded by tourists or spend thousands of dollars on a glass bottom bungalow to have a good time in the Maldives. Because views like this and this will be the same regardless of which bed you sleep in. <sighs> For my last story about Islam, I want to tell you about a young lady who I met in Paris last summer. Her story is truly amazing. This is Justine. And Islam became my life. Let's back up to the year 1993. Justine was born into a Christian family in Rouen, the capital of Normandy in France. She lived an ordinary childhood, taking up boxing when she was 10 and competing on a national level. At 16, she went to Hamburg, Germany to work and learn German, but found a love for Islam after teaching cooking classes to Syrian kids inside a mosque. She went back to France as a converted and practicing Muslim, but her life took a drastic turn when she was 22. She was hit by a truck in the street, which left her with broken legs, hands, hips, and an injured skull. Oh man. How many stitches did you have? Uh, 19. 19. What happened during the accident? So she was crossing uh, the road and she was on one pathway and the, the truck didn't see her and just came on the pathway and hit her and ran. Her life flashed before her eyes. The doctors told her that she wouldn't be able to walk for four years. They told her that she would never be able to uh, do sports again or to be a firefighter. But this girl is strong. After just seven months of being disabled in a wheelchair, plus two operations, she found the courage to start walking again. That was four years ago, and it hasn't been easy since then. Every day, she has to do lots of physical therapy and take daily medications to keep her healthy. At times, she's been lost and confused, so she became more religious and it helped her recover and stay positive. She prays five times a day and she keeps halal. Immediately after the accident, she realized that the accident was beneficial actually and it was not something bad. It was just an exam or just a, a test from God. Her latest project entails this French gastronomic food truck which she started three years ago. They only serve halal food and it's amazing. So it's a food truck who does uh, wraps, salads. And what they do is they go to offices where they do not have canteens or their own cafeteria and they take orders from there. And every week the menu varies. Justine just made us this food and we're gonna try it. Deanna, go for it. How is it? I got the happy dance. Let me try. So good. Yes. Delicious. At 26 years old, Justine is now happy, healthy, and has a very bright future ahead. She plans to get married, visit Mecca, and expand her business overseas. So she said that since she started this, she proved herself and she proves it every day to others as well that you can be a woman, you can be um, disabled, a Muslim, and be a successful entrepreneur. For some of us, religion isn't a big part of our lives, and for others, it helps us find meaning and a purpose. This is a success story for how a young girl has used religion to help her overcome difficulties in her life. We must always respect other people's opinions and beliefs because you never know what they've been through. Justine is the ultimate fighter. 
I would like to end this video by saying Ramadan Mubarak to all my Muslim brothers and sisters out there. I really hope to see you guys soon, inshallah, whenever I'm able to travel again and the world gets back to normal. So with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Love you so much, and I'll see you later. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.